Hey, are we live? Hi, doing everyone. Koji here, Train Complete Come. This is a live stream. Uh, I just need a couple thumbs up or comments that we are okay with the sound and everything is fine. I'm gonna check it here and invite our first guest. It's gonna be Julia. So give me a couple minutes and wait people to come and join. And invite our first guest. It's gonna be Julia. Okay, sounds look good for me here. Um, hopefully everything is good. So welcome here if you are here. If not, then uh, why not you here? Let me just share this with other people. Share, couple link. Mm -mm 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 -mm. We are alive. Hello. Hello, hello. Hello. Hello, hello. 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 Jó, Youtube-on jó, de itt valami, valami nem. Lehet, hogy itt uh, valami beállításod. Well, Youtube-on jól néz ki. <laughs> uh, Nézd itt a beállítás, lehet, hogy nincs okay. megosztulat. Uh, jó. De hát a kamera és mikrofon gomb az él. Csak én most magamat nem látom. De téged se. <laughs> Engem se? Nem, senkit nem látok, semmit nem látok. Az kemény. Mi így nézünk ki Youtube-on, úgyhogy működik. <gül> Na, most megjöttél. Tényleg? Ah, Aha. Oké. Okay. Lehet, hogy egy kis idő. biztos. <gül> Lehet, hogy egy kis idő. Jó, átállítom ilyenre, ez jobban néz ki. Oké, okay. szia. Yeah. So, uh, uh, we're gonna go <gül> switch back to English, because yeah. people are gonna understand, but um, yeah, let's see, you don't know, like, uh, You're Hungarian, I'm Hungarian, so we know each other. We never met, actually, but we know each other from through Instagram. So we could talk about Hungarian, but no one would understand. So uh, <laughs> someone who doesn't know you, um, please tell about a little bit more yourself, what you do, where have you been in the last couple of years, what you've been working on, and, and what you do now. Okay, so that's going to be a long one. <laughs> okay, maybe not. <laughs> we get time, we get time. So, um, so I'm Julia, I'm from Hungary, and um, in life's mysterious ways, I came across yoga. And so I studied about yoga and meditation for the last about five years. And um, I traveled to India to learn, um, to start with. And then from there, life took me to Bali, where I was lucky enough to lead a yoga school. And then um, Corona happened, so I came back home to Hungary. And um, it's just a really, really interesting journey because I met so many people who all had some sort of calling inside them to kind of, you know, um, just know more about their own bodies, what they're capable of, um, how to get rid of pain, um, how to live a better and healthier life. And that's just so interesting to see from all over the world. I had students from America, Australia, Saudi Arabia, like from all over the world. And they were all looking for the same thing. And yeah, it was it was a very, very interesting journey. And so um, my specialty became um, some sort of like therapy yoga and anatomy. Mm -hmm. Uh, just to help people who have, um, well, not constant pain, but, you know, everybody's in front of their computers and they're, hmm. they, they don't have a great posture. So everybody has neck pain, back pain, knee pain, hip pain, all these things. And, and it's really, really rewarding to work with these people and just help them on their journey to know their bodies and why they have pain. And then, you know, just give a little exercise and maybe it's all out of the picture. So yeah, that's nice. what I've been focusing on. 
Very interesting. And um, why Bali? How, how, like, I know there's a, like a big uh, fitness boom in Bali in the last <laughs> couple of years. Um, how did you end, like, I guess you were teaching yoga in, in Hungary, maybe, before, or? Actually, I lived in England also, um, okay. and I did teach uh, yoga, but only part-time. And I just felt like I needed some sort of deeper education before I could really put myself out there full time. So that's why I went to Bali and I wasn't looking for a job. I actually just wanted to learn. And the day I arrived to Bali, I got a job offer. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> so that kind of took over um but i continued my studies also but but it was obviously helping me to stay there for years and years um that i actually had a job so interesting yeah. interesting um so how long how long you been in in bali for two and a half years two and a half years wow nice yeah. <laughs> do you miss it <laughs> I do <laughs> so badly. It's so cold I, 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 here. I know, right? Should be better in the last couple of months. Okay, and uh, when did you when did you go back to Hungary? Just before Corona, or after Corona? After Corona, because I lost my job. So the school I worked for was organizing yoga teacher trainings for people from all over the world. So they would all come to Bali and then we would uh, give them a certificate after a month's uh, intensive training. Mm -hmm. uh, but obviously when people couldn't really come to Bali or didn't want to anymore, then um, yeah, my job kind of disappeared. <laughs> got, it. Yeah. got it. And then um, after you moved back home, what, uh, do you still teach online? Because your Instagram is like booming up. Yeah, yeah. I, I do teach online. I also do uh, private students. I actually moved to a bigger house, so I do have a yoga room. So oh, nice. those who don't fear the virus or me or whatever, <laughs> then they can come to my home and then we have one on one sessions or small groups. Um, and yeah, there's no studios and this is just easier. I also prefer one on one. Um, mm compared to a studio class, because it's just easier to um, work with someone personally. So um, I'm sure you you know also from uh, being a personal trainer that when you just work with a person and you can just work for their goals and it's not a group of people that you instruct the same thing, but like, you know, and for some people, what you instruct will be great, but maybe for some, it's just not the thing. So yeah. that's what I feel about yoga also that it is possible to teach 30 people at the same time, but the it's results are so much better when yeah. you're actually just focusing on one person, so. Yeah, it's very it's very hard to find a group which is everyone on the same level. Because yeah. if, if everyone is in a different level, then you talk to 30 different people in the same time, like, okay, like beginners doing this, then advanced doing this, experts doing that, and then like you just, you know, it's hard, very hard to, especially you just even monitor them. You just cannot look at the oh, yeah. 30 different people. Um, yeah. Yeah. And they all have well, different bodies. And, you know, yeah. I'm sure you also ask all your clients before you start working together, like what kind of injuries they had, if they have yeah. any conditions and things like that. Well, to remember 30 people's conditions, not to, not to mention that people forget to say these things yeah. <laughs> so whoever is watching please just tell your instructor what you're suffering with it's okay yeah. we can exactly. work around it just like don't tell me after 50 minutes of training oh by the way i had like a spine surgery <laughs> yeah <know>? yeah sometimes <laughs> like i've been training someone for weeks and it turns out they had like a broken knee or something and happened like oh okay well, let's change everything know. <laughs> that really does change everything yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah medication as well so yeah oh God. a lot of things yeah okay yeah. and um i know there is a big change in your life nowadays so like talk about it a little bit if you want <laughs> i don't know if you want if you if you don't then yeah, yeah sure i mean are you talking about my pregnancy yes <laughs> <laughs> that's a big change i feel big <laughs> <laughs> yeah, How do you that feel? was. Uh, oh. I feel good now, but okay. I have How to say that are? about halfway. Halfway. Okay. Uh, thank God. <laughs> the <laughs> beginning was 
hard. You wouldn't even think, especially men, I don't know, when it's like not visible, you don't see anything. It's just someone suffering so much. And you're like, what for? I can't even see anything. You know? <laughs> Maybe you would you would say, okay, when you just gained like, I don't know, 20, 30 pounds. Okay, well, I can understand that. But hmm. mm, the beginning was hard. I was basically laying on a couch for two months <laughs> and wishing for my own death. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> but yeah, it was hard. Um, I, I felt really, really sick. I never felt that sick in my whole life. But mm. um, that kind of ended with the end of the first trimester. And then now I feel good and back to my yoga practice and running. So I feel active again. Okay, so how, how, does, it, how does it change your, your training routine? Can you do the same yet? Or you have to change something? Or what, if you did, what did you change? Wow. Um, it's a big topic, actually. Um, could do a whole other um, live stream just about that. Um, it's very interesting because so many more things change with pregnancy than what you would expect. Again, because it's for so long, it's not really visible. So you don't, you can't really just observe the body and say, okay, well, you'll need this and this and this, like you would uh, when you work with someone. But it's just such an intuitive state that you know exactly what foods you need to eat, when, how much, like it's like what kind of movements feel good, like as if someone from inside is telling you what is good for you and what isn't. So I could probably do the exact same training that I did before, but some things just don't feel right. and. Maybe I don't even have enough knowledge to know why. Um, it's not even things you would think, like bending forward, obviously, when you have a belly, but bending yeah. forward actually feels great <laughs> well, with the legs apart, obviously. But, um, but it's just somehow the body starts craving much slower movements. Hmm. Um, and it's just, I, I could. I could really only explain it as being very intuitive. Like every week, I just feel something else is needed for my body. Mm. And uh, I'm sure things change in the inside much more rapidly than what I see or feel from the outside. Um, and I'm sure that's the reason why. But um, obviously there is, um, well, maybe not obviously, but <laughs> so there's um, a hormone that gets um, into the bloodstream of the mother uh, very early days of the pregnancy. It's called relaxin. So it kind of relaxes all the joints and um, well, not really the muscles, but tendons and ligaments, uh, obviously in preparation for birth. Um, but that also makes things more unstable. So um, a lot of people who were pregnant before me and like they're my girlfriends and they told me about all these things they said oh my god i loved it so much i was like so flexible naturally and i just feel like well you weren't like you had an extra hormone for it it's like <laughs> drinking a shake and saying like okay well i had lunch now well you didn't <laughs> so you know what i mean so um it's also something that you really have to be careful about because if all your joints are much looser, then you really need to think through where you're pushing your boundaries, right? So you don't wanna be unstable, but also you don't wanna tighten up when your body is telling you to relax naturally, right? So it's kind of a, a, an intuitive balancing, I feel yeah. like. That's interesting. Yeah 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 that's what i see when i when i train someone who is pregnant or i if if i train her before and then became pregnant it's obviously the the biggest thing for them is they they just wake up one day and they may cannot do the same thing they did it last week and then it's kind of getting worse every week as we going forward like in terms yeah. of energy you know it's not just oh, being big sure. because uh, if i just if I just get someone who's pregnant and never trained them before, I would, I would treat her as like as anyone else. I need to see their limits, I need to do their flexibility, the strength level. So it wouldn't you know change really much. Just because you're pregnant, you don't have to you know change anything. The only thing you have to monitor is obviously is the intensity of the exercises. Because yeah. um, my my biggest uh, goal is with with pregnant 
say, or pregnant uh, girls who is just just adjust and make sure they're moving every day mm -hmm. and and do whatever we can and always trying to keep up the strength level as they have and so when they have the baby they can bounce back easier yeah for sure and it's also um uh very important to move i mean obviously <laughs> duh but like throughout pregnancy because um you gain a lot of weight within a short amount of time and that's just such a strain on the joints especially the lower back all pregnant ladies complain about their back and then they have um all these problems with knees and ankles because obviously the weight so if you take care of those muscles then they can carry the extra weight for a little while like your yeah. body is always capable of much more than what you would think exactly. um and you never know until you have the extra um weight on you and then you're like oh shit i could do that <laughs> it's fine yeah. my body can still do it and um but i would always encourage um people to not start training like like not excessive training but like obviously no weightlifting and no abs workouts like these are kind of obvious things and and you also feel they don't feel good um but if you don't feel what's good for you then just don't start a new training routine when you're yeah. pregnant so yeah. it's great to start beforehand so then maybe you feel a little bit shitty in the first couple months but then you're okay going back to your routine um because the body doesn't forget what you've been doing before so that's great but if this is a special situation in your body it's it's a very different load like from the inside also uh -huh. and then you add like extra training that could be harsh on the body yeah or it can cause any problems if you know someone's prone to that so maybe just like start training before you know you want to get pregnant um and then just keep up that routine uh, a little bit adjusted throughout the pregnancy and you know like if someone was never running in their lives well maybe halfway through your pregnancy is not the time to start running <laughs> but if you're a runner all your life or you hit the gym five times a week before your pregnancy then it's perfectly fine to keep that up if you have your energy levels up um but probably like don't start a completely new routine hmm. yeah yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, yeah, because I, I think like you have to, you know, pursue all aspects of fitness, but it's not a good idea. Just uh, start everything in the same time when you are pregnant, like, oh, uh, I'm just going to do everything and be fit. You have to be prepared for that. And unsurprisingly, like, like those ladies, they are like, even during pregnancy, who've been training before, they can, they can keep up up till the end. Like I have girls who's like nine months pregnant and they're still coming to the gym and they're still smashing it and and then they have usually an easier delivery as well and then they have, they bounce back pretty quickly after after yeah. the pregnancy so it's it's always good to be fit before you get pregnant and um, okay. i think it's really important to keep up moving because it's easy to you hear, you hear this a lot of ladies like oh you're not pregnant i have to eat for two and it's like uh, I, I don't, I cannot move. You have to be careful. Like, it's fine. <laughs> You'll be fine. Yeah, I mean, just imagine evolutionarily, it wouldn't make sense if a woman had to be like completely sedentary right. for like nine months just to carry a child. Like yeah. in the olden days, it wasn't an option. Like not even so olden days. Just like maybe a hundred years ago. Like women mm. had to go out and plow the fields and all these things and they couldn't be away yeah. from work for like a year just because they had a little baby or they were expecting yeah. and they they kept doing these things and you know kids were born and those were our grandparents and you know yeah. and they're yeah. fine yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so how's 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 your day look like how's how's your day as a julia life and wake up to go to bed what's mm -hmm. happening <laughs> Well, I have a routine, but it's not that strict. So I'm kind of going with the flow sometimes. I'm just trying to stay intuitive and see what my body wants. But usually I like to keep my phone off 
until I trained and had breakfast in the morning. So I'm not carried away with news and messages and, you know, just staring at a screen like right in the morning. So I usually wake up um, latest by six and then I have an about hour, hour and a half long practice. This is usually um, about a good half an hour meditation. I find that meditation actually helps so much with physical training. I don't yet know how, like I'm just not smart enough or experienced enough to know that, or there's no books about it. But somehow I found that the more time I assigned to just sitting and quieting my mind, the more effective I am with my physical training. So uh, this might be a lot of little bit of like a psychology here. I don't know. But um, somehow it's like a little grounding and centering. My focus goes to one place. And then after that, training just goes so much better than if I just like started right away. So okay. I sit quietly um, for quite a while. And then after that, I have a gentle yoga practice. And then when I have more energy, I do a little bit of training too, which is very gentle also, just like you know, squats, or I don't even know the names of these things. <laughs> it's really something gentle. Like, it's not the kind of training that you post about. So. <laughs> it's much more gentle. Yes, yeah, stretch your upper body. Yeah, yeah. Just, you know, to wake everything up. Mm. Uh, my focus uh, with the yoga and the training also is always to move each and every joint in the body um, and move them to their full range of motion into every direction so it might sound funny but like i even stretch my fingers and my toes and i do like circling with the ankles and the wrists and everything which don't seem like big movements but they really engage at the end of the day if you move all the joints in your body then by the end of your practice you've moved all your muscles right because the muscles move the joints exactly. so um so I always pay attention that um, nothing gets behind because I think everybody has that weak spot that you don't like to train because you're just not good at it and you don't like to not be good at something. So then yeah. you just never take care of it and then it just gets worse and worse and worse. So yeah. avoiding that situation, I <laughs> just train everything. Um, and it's also really easy to follow because you can just sit down and start with your toes and your ankle and then your knee, like they come one after the other. So you don't forget about any of them. You don't need like, you know, someone's instruction or you don't need notes to know which comes after which because you look at your body and you see what's the next joint and then you just move it in every possible direction. So, um, yeah, there's so many things to do. So sometimes actually my practice is two hours because I'm just having too much fun. Wow. Um, but um, it's just enough to get me hungry. And so then I have breakfast. <laughs> I usually eat vegan. Um, but now that I'm pregnant, I eat eggs also. So I usually eat eggs for breakfast. It's just something that my body wants. And now is not the time for me to go and deny my body what it wants so we'll see what happens after pregnancy but i'm being flexible now and yes after breakfast i usually start work i have a day job just to stay alive so it's a boring computer job <laughs> but i sit on a fitness ball so my posture yeah. is good <laughs> um and I do have little tricks for during the day when you've been sitting way too much and yeah. you just start slouching and like inevitably your posture won't be good for eight hours of sitting or even a couple hours of sitting. So there's good tips there, which I'm happy to share someday. Um, and then, yeah, after the day job comes, um, you know, the clients who come over for class um, or cooking for the week or you know, I really enjoy cooking. And uh, so I like to just be creative. And I love having ideas from Instagram or YouTube. And there's a lot of good chefs out there. So mm. I really enjoy making beautiful food and, you know, eating it in like five minutes and making it for two hours. 
<laughs> that's yeah. always the end of it. Yeah. yeah. And ever since uh, my pregnancy started, I go to bed at like 8 p.m. <laughs> nice. I know. <laughs> Crazy <laughs> short days, right? <laughs> but yeah, that's that's pretty much what it is. That's good. That's good. Okay. And um, what's the what's the future? How do you see 2021? Um, obviously, I don't, like well, I know what's the situation in Hungary roughly, but um, what's the plan? Do you want to go back to Bali? I obviously have a baby now. Um, you gonna you know stay there for longer? What's what's the plan for 2021? Well, I'm actually working on uh, a business which will be. Um, a yoga anatomy course uh, mm. online. Um, I'm going to record it, um, the video material in a couple of weeks, and then I'll start uploading it and anybody can access it. Uh, but mainly I'm targeting yoga schools um, because for the foundational yoga teacher training, um, there are given hours that you must spend with learning anatomy. But mm. in my opinion, well, in my experience, uh, having met a lot of schools in Bali, they kind of don't really like teaching anatomy um, because, you know, if, if you're a yoga teacher, you just want to teach yoga, right? You, you don't want to go into the technical details. Um, and so they either kind of miss anatomy, which is a big problem, or just get some like outsider teacher who is probably not even a teacher, but like, you know, maybe a physiotherapist or a doctor or something, which is perfectly fine, but it doesn't mean they know exactly what yoga anatomy is like, and mm. like how to teach everything in 20 hours to a group of people um, who will then become basically movement professionals. Yeah. Um, so I met a lot of bad anatomy teachers in Bali, sorry to say that, not meaning they didn't have the knowledge, more likely they didn't have um, the knowledge on how to teach. Um, and so then groups ended up just like not understanding a word and being afraid of anatomy. Mm. Although if you don't really think about, oh my God, I got to learn all the Latin words and blah, blah, blah. Apart from that, it's it's very logical. It's, it's biomechanics. It's like, it's a little yeah. bit of physics. So um, I really believe that I can teach it in a way that, um, is understandable and and it's easy to apply to one's yoga practice or training practice um so i will i will offer that program to schools also i also want to open up um a facebook group for people who are interested in um, sharing anatomy sort of questions or maybe you know if someone finds out some sort of new scientific discovery about these topics then they can share i would also like to interview people who are smarter than me and talk about like specific topics on anatomy and things like that nice. so um this is kind of my plan mm, to do while i don't know having a baby probably not a while but before and a little bit after <laughs> but, um you know just something in my field to do uh that is compatible with being a mom um and about going back to bali um i really want to but also my mom lives in the house next door <laughs> and i'm about to have a baby yeah. so yeah. <laughs> it's like the free help or bali <laughs> yeah <laughs> maybe in the first couple of years we'll stay home just uh, because we have a lot of help around and i have siblings too and they can help um but probably by the time maybe like kindergarten or school time starts for the kids then we'll we'll go back definitely to bali mm. yeah do you think uh do you think this COVID situation uh, changed the way you see the future of yoga or yoga teaching or you still think this one-on-one -on -one or in person is is the ultimate way to well teach? i i really wish i were more flexible in my mind and i could say oh yeah you can do it all online but it's almost as if you were like a, a medical student and you had your dissections like on a live stream you know what i mean huh. like they're they're just there's just things that you cannot learn online. 
Mm. And um, I don't know where viruses and epidemics and things like that will take the world, but I don't know. There's so many people around me who don't, well, not like don't care about it, but but they're not afraid of going to a one-on-one -on -one class. And most people really like can't can't wait for all the places to open and finally go out and not wearing masks. If that will ever happen, I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I think the world will will not go back to normal, but kind of find a new normal where we aren't constantly afraid of some sort of pandemic and things like that. Um, yeah. And there will be a need for personal touch, not in the touch sense, but you know what I mean? Like yes. you yeah, just definitely. need to meet your teacher and you need to hug a friend. And there are things that won't be possible to give to people if it's not in person. So, right. Although I'm myself, I'm recording a live training with the parts of the training that can be taught live uh, or online, sorry. Uh, but everything and all of the yoga, I, I really don't vibe with like 200 hours of training only online with yoga. And then like I wouldn't want to go as a new yoga student to a teacher's class who's never seen a person in real life. You know what I mean? Sure. sure. And I'm sure it's the same with personal training. Like, like you had to be there with your teachers in the gym and like try yourself with your mom and siblings and friends first, like in real life. So then you yeah. can be at the level where you are now in your expertise, right? You couldn't have instructed someone just over video or something. So there are things that can't be brought into the online world, I think. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a great option that we have this today. Like we probably wouldn't have this like just like 10 years ago where the internet wasn't like everywhere, mm -hmm. cell phones weren't there. So I think it's great that today, like even your own students have this option to like, okay, we know this is permanent. Maybe this is like going for a year now but still it's like a permanent thing and then I can still improving and, um, and, you know, find great teachers online. I don't have to stop training because a lot of people just stopped training at all. Yeah. Um, even yoga doesn't require any equipment. So to say, like, I know there's like some blocks and you can help uh, into position, but uh, we don't need the math probably. Mm -hmm. um, and still people don't do it. So um, it's good that, you know, personal training is always good, or if a teacher that it's, it's keep you keeps you on point, keeps you dedicated to. Okay, I have to do this because I have the class coming up. So yeah. I think it's a good option. But personal training is not gonna away. Gyms and studio is not gonna go away. I think people want personal touch as well. Okay, I'm not gonna hold you long. I know you have the uh, things going on. Just uh, last thing, when people can find you, and um, yeah, just tell them when where they can contact you if they want to. Well, everything is on my Instagram, which is um, yoga ing everywhere, like ing, like eating yoga ing. <laughs> I don't know why I have to explain that every time. I should just change my handle. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> but, yeah, so everything I do is uploaded there. There's links in my bio and um, I will keep uploading my videos and live classes there. So Super. yeah, everything Super. comes into my Instagram. Super. Okay. Okay. I'm going to make sure I put everything in the, uh, in the description below so people can check thank it out. You. Hey, Julia, thank you. It was a great, nice chat. Nice to see you here. Mm -hmm. and, and hopefully we can, we can see you a couple of, I don't know, weeks, months again. And tell you all about the, the baby if you have it. Yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for having Thank you me. very much. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. See you later. Bye. <laughs> okay. So for those who uh, joined a little later, this was Julia, yoga teacher. She's been in England and Bali and in Budapest now. So when she was telling her perspective, how COVID obviously um came into the game and then like we have to change everything travel home from bali she got pregnant in the meantime so 
her life is a little like changing every time, but she keeps it up. She keeps it on top. Uh, and it's great to see. Um, it's a good inspiration for people who are like, oh, everything is falling apart. Like, no, you can you can hold it apart and you get, hold it together and then you can still training, still pulling everything together and be nice and happy. Okay, just see some couple comments like people are here. Uh, if you have any questions, shoot me. We have half an hour before Lara comes to, um, to the live stream. So we're gonna go to some of um, some fitness news, but if you have any questions, shoot it in the comments. Man, I'm thirsty. Um, okay, so what I want to show you, there are some couple very interesting um, news about body fat percentage and smoking. Hopefully you can see this. Uh, let me see if it pulls it up. But there's this article about uh, body fat killing more people than smoking in England and Scotland. So we are in England. I'm just checking if, uh, if you can see this because the stream is a little bit behind what I see. Well, basically what it, uh, what it says is uh, excess body fat and obesity are likely to have contributed to more deaths in England and Scotland than smoking since 2014. Um, also, according to new research from the Health and Wellbeing University of Glasgow, um, I don't think you can see this. Can you see this? Probably not. Whatever. Uh, while um, uh, authors and lies collected between 2003 and 2017, and um, among men, obesity, excess body fat accounted for 5.2% and more death than smoking during 2017, just compared to figure of women was 2002%. Uh, was junk foods cheaper than cigarettes? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, uh, there's a recent this study, University of Cambridge found that six, uh, 689 government policies over a period of 30 years had failed to tackle obesity crisis in the UK. So, yeah, obesity is no joke, man. Uh, just leave it to comment if you can see the article or you can only see me. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, I'm going to move to the, to the next one because um, we have couple of news I wanted to hear. So um, Humphrey, <laughs> our Humphrey from Pure Gym, um, was speaking up uh, like two days ago. And um, I'm just going to read this up. So placing gym and leisure centers at the front of queue for reopening will be making a statement of intent to building healthier and better Britain after the pandemic. This is the view Humphrey Cobalt, CEO of Pure Gym, who has made passionate call for the UK government to allow do uh, doors to physically activity facilities to be thrown open as soon as possible. Speaking today, this is February 18, that's two days ago, Cobalt said that gyms are highly regulated and controlled environments when compared to some other indoor spaces, meaning they are safer for people to visit. And I've been like saying this for years. Yeah, not years. Yeah, you can only see me. I don't know why you can only see me. It should be uh, uh, screen sharing. Whatever. So um, I've been saying this for years, like uh, from since the pandemic started, like the government want us to wanted us to do the the, all the changes in, in the pure gym, like, uh, you know, two meters apart, uh, put up the squares, uh, cleaning stations, and, um, and, and all these changes where we have to make to be open, to, re, to be able to reopen. Uh, that was in July last year. Um, and then the commissary come and saying like, okay, it's safe, it's good, it's spread out, it's spaced out. 
Um, and then finally, they let us, let, uh, let us reopen. And a couple months later, they closed it anyway. So we spent so much money and energy to, to make up the gym nicely. Well, it's not just our gyms, but hundreds of gyms in the UK. And then they still, like, with all these restrictions, they said, no, you cannot stay open. So I don't know what was the point, you know, do this, all these things where the government wanted to uh, wanted us to, to do, and then um, they just still kept it on. So the gym is actually very safe. Like, a way easier would like to go into a gym than into a grocery store, for example, or, you know, anywhere else. It's very spaced out, very clean. I think it's cleaner than ever been <laughs> in, um, since we opened. And... And then we have a limit of members who can come in. So you're never going to get more people in than, than in the gym. It's, it depends on the square meter on the gym. but uh, So bigger gyms can have more people, obviously. But um, it's really, really spacious. It's really good. Um, I think it's just a no-brainer to go into the gym. Uh, and it's not just for, you know, it's not something, gym is not something like a cinema, for example, like it's entertainment or, you know, it's a leisure thing. Like we go there to improve our health. And in the middle of a health, health crisis, closing these facilities with the restrictions already applied, it just doesn't make any sense. Uh, especially if it's the own government data says, like the cases came from gyms is like less than a percentage. So... Why would you close these uh, facilities? Obviously, I'm biased. I'm a personal trainer, but it never made sense to me to put gyms together with the pops. Like it's like one is <laughs> destroying your health, another one is improving your health. So I never understand what's the point doing that. Um, so just like I already see comments, and um, we're going to to what a uh, couple said is even the minutes of Sage meetings last year indicated that gyms. Uh, being open would make little measurements the uh, difference in the R rate. Yeah, so that's what I was been just saying. It's like 1% of uh, the cases coming from gyms. Uh, the government is currently finalizing its reopening roadmap uh, with an announcement concerning the exact details due to next week, week beginning 2020 February. So, yeah, next week we got an announcement from Boris, our leader, and uh, he's going to tell us something, probably like the school reopened. We talked about it last rise, live stream that we are anticipating if the if the schools open in the 8th of march then three four weeks time we can uh see other groups or sectors are opening up as well so best case scenario april gyms open i said i wouldn't be surprised it wouldn't be the first group to open uh the gyms and restaurants etc so end of april may uh, i think that's where we're going to see opening up the sector. Uh, as our leaders meet over the coming days to review the data uh, to discuss post-pandemic plan, we respectfully but firmly request that they place gyms and fitness centers early in the sequence of reopening, Cobalt said. Specifically, we ask government to heed uh, the wishes of people, millions of normal people across the whole country who've been denied access to gym and facilities, fitness facilities over the last years and grant them the right as soon as safely possible in the reopening period. This would be a positive progressive step to statement of intent that this government committed to build healthier and better Britain after the pandemic. Uh, in this most recent lockdown, Pure Gym current research of 7,000 gym members suggests that over 85% of the members cite gym closures as having a negative effect of physical well-being and 80, 98, sorry, 98% indicate that gyms are important to their mental well-being. So, um, yeah, I've been a big proponent of this uh, on Instagram, other platform as well. Like, for a lot of people, it's mental. You know, training is mental. And don't tell me that you can train at home because <laughs> you cannot train at home. There's no space, no equipment, no motivation. It's going to die off. You need a facility to go in and train. Um, it's really hard if you if you don't have the equipment and you don't have the space and the motivation and you're leaving your home, leaving your room, and then put everything in the same place. Um, so yeah, most people are gonna stop exercising, stop working out if they don't have the facility. So um, 
especially winter time and like i have so many complaints that this lockdown is way way harsher than the summer one or one of them like i don't know how many lockdown we had so far um uh, but and way easier when the weather is good you can go out you can be outside when in a place like like england when it's just dark and rainy and cold for like six months and taking away to be the ability to go into a gym and, and train and bring up your mood a little bit that's just cruel man it's just cruel okay let's let's go to um to uh, carry on with uh, what Cobalt said. Many people do not have access to safe outdoor space. Yeah, that's what I said. Particularly in winter and home gyms and, and Peloton bikes are the preserve of the wealthy. Exactly. Like they said, like Peloton, man, there's like more than 3,000 pounds in the treadmills and like where they put them. And, you, and then after pandemic, only oh, never going to use it again. At Pure Gym, we offer access to good quality facilities, average price of 20, 20 per month compared to the peloton man and it's just cardio it's not don't even talk about weight training um gyms are unique in that their closure is bad for both uh, livelihoods over 400,000 people are employed within the gym and fitness industry and the health and well-being of the nation the continued support for gyms to be reopened in the population at large is underscored by the uh, growing number of people who have signed or are signing petition to the effect. So there isn't a petition again to gym to reopen the gyms. This is like a fifth one. <laughs> uh, so you can sign that as well. Again, just Google petition petition to, to reopen gyms. Um, sign that. It's over like 300,000 now. Um, at Pure Gym, we do not for one moment advocate recklessness and we uh, agree entirely with the government cushions approach to reopen and its commitment to make the last lockdown that the country has to endure this request is not at all about rushing to people to reopen but it's about sequencing an order in which society is reopened the government has um, rightly been praised for its vaccine rollout program which has proven the game changer and the benefits of outstanding effort must not be squandered we must all wait patiently for the impact of the effort to be felt and guanishing what is this word uh, too many of us finding the delay yeah i think i think the only thing they the government does did well is this is this the, the vaccine like the if the numbers are right and the vaccination is over 50 million now that's that's well done i don't know it's one dose but still it's really good um and um the infection rate is like really low now um but i'll rather wait one more month and being this the last lockdown then do this again the r it goes up a little bit and close down again everything is just like man it's just killing everything everyone so uh i wouldn't mind going back in april i don't mind going back in may just make sure this is the last one i don't want to do this again and i'm sure i'm not the only one so uh um, if 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 everything goes well then this hopefully gonna be the last one but who knows nowadays so um well done government for the for the vaccines uh when it comes to reopening recent media reports have suggested that outdoor venues will be prioritized as always but we encourage the government to take considered approach in this regard not all indoor space are equal yeah that's what i've been saying gyms are highly re regulated and controlled in greater degree than other indoor spaces and we believe are safe as a result the protocols for covid safe operation gyms and fitness centers were advised through close consultation with government experts uh i personally met oh, blah 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 these protocols were rigorously applied to pure gym and across the sector survived the entire appropriate uh, scrutiny of literally hundreds of environmental health officers who regularly visited our site across the country when we opened last year yeah i made a video about this if you go to the gym news playlist you can see uh, we have talked about this before um let's jump even the minutes of sage meetings last year indicated there are late uh, oh, like this uh, this has been huge health crisis for our nation and we acknowledge the 
the challenges of continue to present them everyone and not least of all those in the government faced with making painfully difficult decision the trade-off however we call on the government in its current deliberation to prioritize the opening of gyms and fitness centers because they so clearly provide the net benefits to the health and well-being of millions of people to reduce the burden on nhs activity and exercise is quite literally a wonder drug in way many ways and in 21st century britain gyms are how many millions chooses to get their fix we at pure gym stand ready in our 275 jesus sites nationwide so do hundreds of thousands of colleagues across the industry to throw open our doors as soon as the government allows to do so yeah man they grew their sites like crazy so almost 300 gyms nationwide hopefully we can open back to them soon so that's from Cobol, the pure gym ceo uh yeah let me just see some comments yeah that's the one thing they've done well at least do you know if the vaccine is vegan i saw influencers saying that it is i don't actually i don't know i know there's a vegan version version for sure but there's so many um different vaccines you have to do your research there are some which is using protein and then some uses a, a dead version of the virus so they're the different ones how they how they inject it into your body or how the body react if it's just to trigger uh your immune system to work i think it's it is vegan i think the pfizer one is the pfizer vegan why don't i look this up is the pfizer vaccine yeah. Um, yes the pfizer vaccine do not contain any meat derivatives but yeah so the, fry, the pfizer one is vegan good question i like those questions yeah the pfizer vaccine is vegan so you can have it um yeah i don't know why you cannot see my screen Ah, okay. Wait. <laughs> now, maybe. Who knows? Anyway, shoot me the questions in the meantime. Probably no. I'm gonna um, well, something off with this sharing man. I can make my maybe now. Meantime, I'm gonna text uh, Alara to come into the to come into the live stream. Uh, nope. Wait. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay. So, so that was the uh, the interview with uh, with Humphrey. If you want to look this up, uh, Jameson COVID. Uh, yeah, we know this. Uh, 
People age 40 with di type diabetes 2 face same risk of dying from COVID-19 as a... Yeah, man. I keep telling this to everyone that the worst thing you can do to yourself is being obese. Like, it's always is coming. Like, it's the worst condition you can be. It's like your heart is always under pressure. Your joints are pain. You have inflammation everywhere around your body. You're carrying this extra weight. You're, you have high chance of being... Um, having diabetes, you know, heart attack. It's just a very, very bad condition to be. On top of that, if you get a virus like this, like how are you going to recover and all of this? So that's the worst, like the middle of the health crisis, closing gyms and, and activities and just keeping telling people to stay home and don't go out for a walk as well as like mental, man. So let's jump into this article here. What if I... Magnify this a little bit so you can see it. Uh, people age 40 living with type 2 diabetes face disproportionately increased risk of dying from COVID-19. Yeah, if you see the data, it's um, it's mental, man. Like if you are like if you are obese or have diabetes, it's like you're in the same group as like an eight years old or something. So be very careful. Be very very careful. You are in a danger group. Uh, the finding comes from a study led by researchers and universities, something which also shows that the risk of death from COVID-19 among those with type 2 increase the younger uh, you are compared to with people of a similar age without the condition. Um, yeah. The additional COVID-19 mortality risk associated with diabetes in terms of COVID age markedly higher than younger than older people. This reflects the high relative risk of COVID-19 related mortality associated with diabetes in younger age groups. For a person age 40 with diabetes, additional mortality risk is equivalent to around 20 years old of chronic age, meaning that mortality risk is similar to that of a 60 years old person without diabetes. For a person age 70 years with diabetes, the additional mortal risk for diabetes equivalent to additional eight years of age. So their COVID age is 78 years. Uh, account for up to 80% of risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Exactly. So obesity, diabetes, COVID age. Or is it uh, suggest that obese people are up to 80 times more likely to develop type 2 diabetes than those with a BMI of less than 22. BMI is like the, the ratio between your body fat and your weight on your body. Um, yeah, so be under 20 is nice. The UK has one of the highest levels of obesity in Europe, one of the, probably the, the highest, with more than one in every four adults obese and nearly two out of three overweight, which is, man, look at these numbers, 28% are obese. Obese is 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 very big like overweight is already uh already a bad sign which is 63 percent is overweight overweight is like I don't know, like 20 15 kilos on you obese is 20 plus uh and then i was like morbidly obese but it's 63 percent is overweight man that's huge um Previously published study foundation culture between obesity and likelihood of governments closing gyms with national with lower levels of obesity more likely to keep gyms open. Doesn't look like it. Uh, any comments so far? Does COVID disproportionately affect red bearded more? <laughs> I don't know if they did a, a study on that. Alex, I'm not sure. I don't think so. I think, I think they are safe. They should be safe. Uh, yeah, I can't see Lara yet. So, so we're going to jump into this article, which is about Pure Gym. Uh, Pure Gym expects European operations to reopen before UK. It was the same last time. Like, Europe reopened, and they were like, totally fine. And we were still close, man. And the numbers were, like, super low. With COVID testing kits, nah, man. I don't think that we have the. I don't think we have the. Someone just uh, Alex is asking if the the gyms uh, opening with COVID testing kits. 
no uh pff, no we have to test every day for like uh fever etc we have to sign a waiver that we are fit to work so uh we're taking the risk every day on our own will but i don't think they have the resources to have like COVID testing kits i think it's just uh not in the budget Pugin burns i don't know if you know these numbers but four million dollar every month not dollar pounds four million dollar four million pounds every month so million pounds a week uh out of the window just because they closed um so yeah i don't think they have the resources right now uh, they're talking about having like a passport for uh, uh, perfect one shall I join now uh, yeah you can join so sorry just uh, Lara's yes you can join so I don't think they have the resources to uh, to do this so Lara is in the house probably so we're gonna jump back to this later but I, I can see her here yet. Come on, Lara. So our next guest is gonna be Lara Rodriguez, my colleague. Yeah, she's been on the channel before. We had a interview with her when COVID started a year ago in March. Um, and uh, if you know her what's going on you can uh, join the room wait okay i have to center another uh, in white yeah so if you are in brighton you know uh, you know lara for sure if um Especially if you are like, coming to Pure Gym, but she's uh, everywhere on on Instagram as well, and she's taking a little bit new approach since the pandemic. So I want to talk about that, and and hope you will interested to see what she what she has to say about it. Don't know what's wrong. She should be here. She said has difficulties to join. We'll see. Good. Something is off. Um, hey, why is it not working? Mm -hmm. I say it could be because I am using Safari. Hmm. Apple, man, because she's using Safari. Apple, never buy Apple, man. Uh, okay, why are we waiting? Uh, okay, yeah, Apple laptop, even worse. Uh, phone. Okay, she's gonna take a couple minutes, so we're gonna jump into this article. Uh, Pugim expects lockdown to last until at least 31st of March. Yeah, that's been the previous log, uh, previous uh, live stream about offering its uh, bondholders an interim update. The gym chain said its all its operation remained closed, and it had two, three, six million of liquidity to end. Yeah, yeah, they got money, so they they're not gonna burn out completely. So they're always gonna have enough money till the 
the uh, till the end. As a targeted, yeah, I told you that they they burn into four million per week, and um, and this is the first lockdown. So it currently operates five hundred gym and has around one point seven million members on the Pure Gym brand in the UK, base fit Switzerland and Fitness World in Denmark. So yeah, last year they just bought like literally before the pandemic. They bought a fitness chain in Denmark and another one in Switzerland to open more gyms, like 200 extra, like mental. And uh, they refitted and everything. Next day they closed. <laughs> so I was very unlucky for them. Um, so I guess they are they closed over there. So they opened before us last year in middle of the summer. They stayed open pretty long, and then but now they closed as well. In August uh, 2020, the company revealed that its Danish and Swiss club returned to pre-COVID profit levels. That's good. The ability to rebuild the business quickly once gyms are reopened, it's clear. Pure Gym said it's the update published in yeah, last week and into the uh, closures. Some competitive gyms will create opportunities for those left standing. Uh, we expect supply and leave market creating further opportunities. Medium long-term outlook remains very positive. Um, what are you doing? Man, we don't need COVID tests. We are we are fit people. <laughs> so, not sure what's going on. Phone. Okay. Okay. Something wrong with Lara. Let me just talk to her. But shoot me the messages or talk in uh, talk in the comments. I just had an interview. Should be fine. Um, okay, there she is. Okay, Lara is here. Welcome here, Lara. What happened? Hello. Sorry for the technical difficulties. That's fine. I swear, usually I'm a bit better at these things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're really good at this. Thing. <laughs> uh, all good. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm excited for this interview. Hope yes, you hope too. you're okay. So, um, as someone who doesn't know, I and mean, you, you've been in this channel before, so people should know. And then we are colleagues. Obviously, we had a lot of projects together yeah. uh, before as well. But someone doesn't know you, who you are, what you're doing, introduce yourself. Right. So my name is Lara. Um, um, as Gergo well said, we are colleagues uh, here in Brighton in the UK. Uh, I'm currently working as a personal trainer. Obviously, gyms are closed, so I'm doing pretty much all my work now. Uh, I'll say half online, uh, half outside, still doing a few PT sessions. We are trying to slowly move into more online based uh, coaching. Uh, I studied sports science back home, so I have a bit of a background on, on sports as well, and I've been pretty much practicing sport uh, my whole life. And now a little bit more moving into wellness, uh, a bit more like health, lifestyle coaching. So that's what I'm uh, currently really passionate about and working towards. So yeah, that's the, that's the thing I was wanting to talk about this, um, that you are moving away a little bit of strength training, fitness, gym based workouts and then you're more open to wellness i mean it's your name like wellness code in your brand but it took you a little bit of how long you've been rebranded yourself like a year or so or maybe more yeah i've been i mean it's, it's trying been, it's been a journey to be honest i mm. think that uh this this journey of of my brand has been happening along as my own self-growth if that makes sense so as i've been discovering myself what i enjoy more uh in terms of exercise fitness wellness i've been uh still obviously i, I enjoy a lot of strength and performance and fitness like everybody knows fitness but i've realized of certain aspects of the industry that i enjoy more and that's what i'm, I'm working more towards I, I think wellness is something I'm really passionate about, just feeling good. And of course, I, I think exercise, um, dieting, healthy lifestyle habit, habits are a, a great way to create that, that environment for people to feel well. 
So that's what I'm moving more towards, more than performance or or purely uh, muscle building or strength training, definitely. Mm. Mm. So what uh, if 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 someone doesn't know what is what is wellness? This is like um, this is something like you uh, you just feel chilled. You go into the pool, relax, cocktails. Right. Um, <laughs> what uh, what what is the approach? That's yeah. a good question. Yeah, that's a good question. So well, wellness, as as the, the word says and describes, is. Uh, about feeling well, about feeling feeling good. Uh, but wellness is a word that is uh, really vague. It, it, it kind of like um, there are different, many different aspects of wellness. You have like fin financial wellness, you have social wellness, you have physical wellness, mental wellness, uh, very, many different aspects. Uh, so obviously I'm a bit more focused on uh, the physical aspect of wellness. Uh, I'm working a little bit on, on mental wellness as well, as I think exercise uh, and physical activity can have a huge impact on your mental health as well. And a bit of a social aspect of it as well, um, as connecting, connecting with people, um, exercise can help you with that as well. So yeah, that's, that's, that's a little bit what, what I'm doing now. Okay. So, um, um, so what is it like, you still do the workouts, right? You, uh, you, you aiming for not being sore next day? What, how would the workout look like? What, what is it? Did you change something in your, in your, in your programming? So I'll say it's more, it's, it, I would say it's more of a mindset. So I feel like mm. you can see exercise is still as a way of, uh, uh, performance if you want to uh, get stronger or uh, if you want to build muscle you can see exercises that but I think also goes beyond that it goes beyond us understanding how exercise can help you to just feel good in daily basis uh, how exercise can impact if you are feeling really stressed or anxious um, uh, or how to how to even include exercise into your lifestyle, you know, not just seeing exercise, okay, I'm just going to go to the gym because I need to perform better, yeah? It's a way of integrating uh, and improving your lifestyle, yeah? So it will be a part of it. Mm. So I, I wouldn't say necessarily I have changed anything with my programming. I'm, I'm definitely really open about experiences, so I don't like to focus on just one single thing. I like to do a lot of uh, different disciplines. I like to improve my strength. I like to improve my, my speed and I like to run. I like to jump. So um, I like to experience. I like to get the most out of everything. That's a bit my, my kind of my mentality and my way of seeing life. So with exercise, a bit the same. I, I try to kind of teach people that it can go beyond of just building muscle, weight loss or get stronger. It can help you yeah. in so many things in your life. Mm, mm. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. No, I know you can go mental and uh, and then go really crazy on something when you're into running or when you're into jumping rope or something. Which is, I want to will talk about in a little. Just like, just want to understand like if someone and let's not talk about you. Like your training is always gonna be improving everything. I know, but if someone like a new client comes to you, uh, what are they looking for, and what can you? give them what what do you teach them like uh your goal is to like the people looking for you like okay i need want to lose like five kilos or more people who wants to just feel better in their skin or or what is your clientele look like so I, I, mainly, is it so mainly a female base as i understand yes yeah, so um my client base obviously it has it has changed uh, within the years of being a personal trainer, I feel at the beginning I would just be really so. Once you once you finish your uh, PT qualification and me coming from sports science, which which is like a really sport coaching uh, orientated uh, career, uh, you see exercise as okay. You need exercise in your life because you want to build muscle, or because you want to increase your strength, or because you want to lose weight. And that's how I used to say as well. Yeah. And most of my clients today, they are females and they come with different goals. Sometimes people come with, I want to still lose weight or I want to build muscle or in general, I just want to feel uh, good within myself. And my, my aim is just to teach people to see more, like create awareness and see more beyond what the initial goal might be. Yeah. So open, it's kind of opening horizons on how exercise and building good habits can actually help you in your life more than just the initial goal of I want to lose weight. Yeah, you can still lose weight. You can still get super strong. That's why I, my training is still, you know, 
getting stronger or getting faster but how that building those habits how uh practicing physical regular physical activity can impact your life so that's that's my my way of approaching this helping you and guiding you through the journey of self-discovering if that makes any sense hmm. Hmm. so what do you do outside of the gym or outside your training to improve well-being and think about like meditation reading yes switching off your phone or something exactly yeah uh i think so obviously myself i do a lot of uh self-discovery i do a lot of um self-improvement uh whether that comes from reading reading writing uh listening to other people doing this this sort of act, uh, activities and chat that kind of puts you in a spot or puts you out of your comfort zone um uh, and that's that's literally it. that's 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 one of the things that i love about exercise because you can you can get that with exercise or let's say for example you're struggling i've had people struggling with running but because not because the actual activity itself where you may be training okay she this person is struggling with running so let's improve her uh, uh strength let's improve their mobility let's improve their um uh, cardiovascular fitness but that person might be struggling with running because they feel uh they feel not confident enough to go out for a run and i've had people like that you know yes. but they're not going to say that on a, on a first on a first approach so that's kind of the journey i am with people and the journey that i'm with myself with, with myself as well kind of like self-improving self-discovering how i just can feel uh happier and improve my well-being in general hmm. interesting okay tell me a little bit about uh, jumping rope <laughs> ah jumping rope so i think well if you know me you obviously know me but if anybody that is uh, watching us know me uh you you probably know that I've gone crazy with uh, skipping since I think July. I was I was checking back videos last last week. I think I've been jumping road like consistently for yeah since tenth of July something like that so for many months now. And that that's it. I think a skipping rope was something really challenging for me at the beginning. I I cannot say that I'm a really coordinated person. I'm not great at coordinating my body and following some sort of rhythm or music. Coordinating and now arms and legs at the at the beginning was just like what, <laughs> how, <laughs> how people are doing this. So it was literally that. Like no, you just need to get through the first stages for, through the frustration and uh, just like all the wh uh, whips. Uh, like I go in my bum, in my face, in my neck, and just build resilience and just keep going, keep going, keep going until you just get better and better and better. And that's how. I see life so um yeah skipping skipping robot has been a journey yeah um it, it started a little hard right you you developed a pretty bad shin splint at the beginning i remember yes tell, tell me a little bit about it so well obviously i got super excited once i learned the, the very basics of skipping and i was like okay i think i can be pretty decent at this I just overdo it too much. I was in the gym and you and you saw me. I was jumping almost every day for two hours. And there is no nobody like doesn't matter how fit, how strong, how faster, how whatever you are, if you overdo on something and you don't uh get enough rest, you're gonna you're just gonna get injured most likely. And well, I I remember speaking to you saying like ah, I want to carry on and you were like Lara, you need to rest. You need to uh, give your body enough time to recovery. And I kept just going and going and going and injure myself. And I had to stop for seven weeks. And when I go back at it, I had to go back by being really mindful with how many days I was training, how I was, how I was doing my warm up, stretches, and yet just be very, very careful. So that set me off a little bit. And obviously, I learned an important lesson from it, which is good. Um, so yeah, that's, that's been pretty much it. I'm back at it now. I'm not jumping as often as I used to. I'm doing a couple of sessions per week, sometimes three, uh, not as long as well. I'm doing a good warm up, always stretching afterwards and just, yeah, combining with all the activities such as running, mobility, yoga, stretching. Yeah, yeah, I saw the last video, it's amazing like how much you, uh, you improved, like long, long combinations and, and long sessions. Like, so it's amazing what you can, you know, achieve. If, if you put into it but so 
learning from your injury, learning from your mistake, what would you say if someone wants to start, you know, jumping rope now? This is like rope every day, just do it better at it. I know you're starting implementing jumping on like a little mat. Yeah. Get a better shoe. What would you suggest to someone to not make the same mistake as you did? Right. First of all, um, from the very, very beginning, just be mindful on how many sessions you are going to schedule every week. Uh, I wouldn't suggest to like be very, very beginner, especially somebody that hasn't done exercise before, to do more than two sessions a week on skipping. And I will start with maybe half an hour. Uh, important, the shoes that you're going to be using. I think it's quite interesting to have uh, shoes that have a bit of a platform so you can absorb a bit the jump, the impact of the, of the constant jumping. Um, definitely do it on a surface where you have a bit of caution. I use since the injury and even before the floor that we have at Pure Gym where I used to jump is quite it, it absorbs the impact a little bit but if you mm. have like uh, if you're jumping on the pavement for example just get a mat a thin mat will help but if you have something thicker like i have a, gymna a gymnastic mat will absorb more that impact as well um technique is really important as well a lot of people who are starting skipping rope and i have a lot of clients that they do it at the end of the sessions for a bit they tend to jump quite high Obviously, the higher you jump, the more impact you're going to be uh, generating. Uh, really aggressive for your knees. So I think it's a combination of many things. The surface, the shoes that you're using, uh, your technique, and then obviously having a proper warm-up and stretching session after, after the skipping is quite important as well. Mm, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So start, start very, very, very slowly and building up as your body is getting used to the activity. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I would say I would say say the the same thing applies to running. Oh, I know a lot of people started to run during the lockdown, and they have the same problem. Shims playing, you know, they just jump in and they're like, oh, it's good. I'm getting better every day a little bit. And they just go further and further and further, and then usually same injuries happen. It's like kind of the same thing. You're just kind of bouncing on the floor a lot of times. So the more you do it, the more prone to injury. Like obviously, anything you overdo is it's is gonna get end up yes. in the same place. And I think like anything, like uh, honestly, anything that you want to achieve uh, related to fitness and exercise, everything has its time and its speed. So if you want to be doing something in the long run and maintain it over, over time, it's better if you start slowly and steady progressing than just going full on and after a month get injured or just, uh, just feeling that it's too much for your body. It can be related to weight loss as, as a sample. When you, some people want to lose weight, stream diets, a lot of exercise really quick, body collapses, lose motivation, stop. So yeah, building up progressively, I think with anything really is, is, is a good strategy. Hmm. Hmm. Um, okay, let's, let's jump a little bit on, um, um, to COVID. I know we were talking about this like uh, almost a year ago on this channel, but like how you changed going online a little bit. Um, you still do online sessions? I do online sessions. So uh, I would say half of my client based from the gym and obviously new starters that have been uh, just coming to me the past months. Uh, I'll say half it's outside, half it's online. Same principle. We do one-to-one -one sessions, obviously through Zoom or FaceTime or, or outside. So people who are training online is more because it's really inconvenience and they are maybe not working in Brighton anymore and they just want to carry on training from wherever they are or weather is not great and then we have to train from, from home. I've had, uh, however, a few people starting that they will never, they are not even in England anymore. Uh, they knew me maybe from back home or from Instagram or just all the platforms online. And because of COVID and because a lot of uh, people are moving into online model, they are, people are a bit more open-minded to do uh, distance coaching. So I'll say I'm, I'm doing a little bit of, of both, but I'm aiming to move in the future to just uh, purely online. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Um, and how's um how's 2021 look like how's 2022 look like how what's what's your outlook because i know you want to you said you want to develop something like a cyst like a wellness system like a more holistic approach right yeah. a little bit away from the 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 traditional personal training yeah and do something else right yeah. so what's 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 the outlook on that 
Well, I feel like uh, as, tw- as the end of 2020 was and uh, beginning of 2021 is, is going to me, it's a bit of a period of transition for me. A lot of self-discovery that obviously is going to impact my, my business. So um, I'll say that this year is going to be a lot of self-discovery still. Um, uh, finding my ways into into that uh, coach, into that online coaching, uh, my ways of transferring how I was a PT to how I want to orientate more uh, the the online model of it. But something that I've discovered a lot this year, and I'm really passionate about, is the actual uh, what coaching means. Um, so I, I've, I've gone through that process myself with a few courses and a few books that uh, I've read and that's the way I'm guiding a little bit more of my clients uh, I would say this it's a process of self-discovery um, whether you come in with a goal well usually you should come with a goal uh, but more more experiencing um, more, more experiencing your options if that makes sense so I'm, I'm gonna be helping you on discovering on guiding you on the journey discovering uh what are your needs what are your goals what, what's your vision of the future how you imagine your health and your lifestyle and your exercise routine in the future and still you probably will have to work out it healthy and i'm going still helping on those areas but see more the the whole picture of it hmm. so that's yeah. that's kind of what i want to take my business towards Hmm, interesting. And um, do you plan this to transition this year or next year? What's, slowly, uh... moving, slowly moving to it. I feel like uh, building a good, obviously, uh, you need a base of clients, the same as I have now. I created for like the past three years in the gym. You need to create a new base of clients with a new model. Uh, I wouldn't say it's necessarily a completely different service, but it's a completely different approach. And it can be quite... Mm, abstract to understand is something that is not uh that much out there yeah so a lot of people are moving towards more a, a holistic approach but still something kind of like newish so i think to me very important this year and even next year is create a bit more awareness on what this is what i'm trying to to do and uh create a bit more community online uh that's mm. going i'm starting obviously i started that with my instagram uh, even if you go back to my Instagram, the way that I was speaking, the way I was uh, um, showing my content, what I was speaking about, everything is changing slowly. Um, so that's what I'm aiming to do, just create a bit more community and more understanding uh, of what wellness coach it is. Mm. Mm. Are you going to come back to the gym or are you planning to move on? Where is that question, Gergo? <laughs> 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 Uh, well, I am planning to come back, definitely. Um, that, that's the thing. I, I'm on a mission of, uh, of creating this wellness approach, coaching, wellness coach approach, because I believe that online is going to give me the opportunity to get to more people. But I love the one-to-one. I love the, the, that one-to-one approach with the client and the conversation and see that, like I call them my babies, how they come to me and how they uh, leave me or how they they are after four years of training. So I love the one-to-one. I definitely will be back and then see how things go. You know, I might, I might do half and half. I might just train my pain favorite clients and then do the rest, the rest online. Uh, but yeah, definitely coming back. Yeah, yeah, that's the reason I yeah, that's the reason I asked because I know you like like the one on one session and yes. you two be the team and then yeah. So it's uh yeah, I guess it's like in half and half. It's a good approach to do that. Yeah. yeah Something I'm a, just- I, I am a really social person, so I also need to kind of go into a slow transition i don't want to overwhelm myself and say like no more physical uh, let's just stick to laptop and a lot of coaching online and then feel like that's not for me you know i have to slowly nice. try out and see how see how it goes see how i feel yeah 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 that's one of the things i wanted to say because you are very community based you like the like together with people and um and um i don't think it will like i think you like to be around people like to be with other people and uh purely closing out with for you just for online might be like you know hard for you 
Yeah, I think it gives you a lot of opportunities. Like I, I have connected a lot with different coaches around the world uh, through Instagram and online, which is amazing. You know, like and even for you to be doing this, obviously I'm in Brighton, but you have been talking to people who are living in different countries, and you still connect. But that physical one to one, I don't think it's the same. I don't think it's the same. Yeah, yeah. Julia just said the same. Like uh, who was before you today? Yeah. Uh, she's a yoga teacher and then she said the same like it's great but something you just cannot you know cannot replace with with purely online stuff like yeah. just being close to it, each other is different than through the monitor yeah that's why yeah. i i think that uh, for a lot of people the online model is a great opportunity but i don't know if we if ever as a community as a, as a humanity just move purely everything mm. fitness everything to to do, to online yeah um, yeah same okay lara uh i know you have clients today so i'm gonna let you go <laughs> just, <yeah. laughs> i've got a bit i've got a bit more time i'm enjoying this a lot gergo we have to do this, this more often yeah yeah definitely come you can come every week if you want uh, uh, tell people where they can they can find you if it's not from brighton so i know so you get an in, uh, instagram i guess yes yeah, so uh obviously if you are from brighton uh i, I have my my base still at brighton uh pure gym brighton central uh but if you're not from here uh you can find me on my instagram it's wellness code underscore and then I have a, a wellness code website as well, which is uh, wellnesscode.co.uk. So you can find me uh, there, definitely. Okay. Always open super. to a chat. Yeah, super. Anything else you want to add? Well, I would say that um, people don't wait. I think Gergo and I and all my colleagues, we are kind of in the same mission. Uh, we want you to stay active and stay fit and just keep going for your goals, whatever whatever it is that you are working towards. Don't wait for the gyms to reopen because we just don't know when it's going to happen uh, just yet. So just get in touch if you need some help. Uh, just call a friend, go for a run and stay active. Stay, stay on top of your diet, on top of your fitness because uh, it's really important and especially on the times that we are living. So yes, don't wait. Come on action okay. now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a that's a great way to put it. Yeah, thank you very much, Lara. Thank you Come for your time. Home. Appreciate it. And thank you and everyone who is watching. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, hopefully we'll see you soon here. Yeah, see you soon. Have a good weekend. Bye. 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 Cool. So that was Lara Rodriguez, my colleague, and she's a coach in Brighton, if you're not from Brighton. Um she has a little bit different approach from since the COVID because I'm trying to invite people into this live stream who like, uh, who changed their, um, their view of fitness or their, their business is, is changing because of COVID because of this, um, situation and, and how this coach is trying to approach, um, the future or the future of fitness and uh, trying to invite from different backgrounds than just strength training so lara is more towards to the wellness more holistic approach not just getting i don't know muscular or performance based run faster which i'm more like a promoter like you know getting stronger getting faster jump higher lose weight look good uh while Lara is like, okay, do you feel good? Do you wanna, um, you know, feel better in your in your skin? And obviously, she's more, more like a female ba based, um, female based clientele. So yeah, that was Lara. Uh, at one p.m., I had um, um, Julia here, who's a yoga teacher, and and then she told how he, how the circumstances change his, her view of teaching yoga from now on and then what was her yeah i miss pure gym too <laughs> yeah i really hope that i like can't wait the gym to open that uh thankfully i have like a nice setup here and in, in my flat so i bought some equipment so i can do 
a lot of things. So I'm pretty fortunate to to have this here. But uh, I think once we're going back to gym, it's just so easy to <laughs> to be like uh, to train in a nice and uh, secured environment, and it's just gonna be easier to to do stuff. It's gonna be fun. Um, looking forward to it. Um, okay, if you have any question, shoot me, and then we're gonna jump back to the to the uh, to the news. I'm just looking on uh, if you have any comments on the other side here. No, no. Okay, but tell me in uh, tell me in the comments. How do you train? What uh, what do you do? Do you do just cardio every day? Do you have weights? Do you um, did you bought some buy some equipment kettlebells dumbbells barbells? What do you do? And in the meantime, I'm gonna pull up some questions. I'm gonna wait for your questions, and I have around like a good twenty minutes. So shoot me anything you have to ask. And then we're gonna check on the news. Uh, let me share the screen. Hmm, that wouldn't be bad. Oof, that is nice. Let's see this. Actually, can I do this and big? No. No. Did you hear me? Did you hear me doing this? No. <laughs> Hope you did. Maybe this I can do this. Uh, 
So yeah, this is a nice place. It will be a nice place to work as well. Um, uh, this facility also has a large fitness suit equipment, techno gym, exercise, dance studio, interactive indoor cycle studio, meeting rooms, and cafe. And you can live, like pff, spend a day there. You have the cafe, you have meeting room, cycle studio. It's just a nice place, man. I really like. I want to see more of this. I really want to see more of this in in UK. Look at this beauty. This must be the swimming pool, I guess. This is very nice, it's huge complex, man. Um, uh, using lights, where it's from home. There is also five court sports hall facilities for variety of sports, including badminton, futsal, indoor cricket, owned the majority founded college, Colchester Borough City. And the project has received significant investment from British Cycling, Sports England, England Wales Cricket Board. Become a new home rugby football club where the archery range of clubhouse has been constructed south of the site will become home Colchester and District Archery Club. Man, this is a nice place. Sports book we will assess before offering activities all ability. Those with disabilities, awesome man. I like to see that. Expertise and commitment delivery project. And the resource expectation sports park that will enable people both locally and from across the wider region get involved active market remarkable facilities. Normal after when things returns normal after COVID-19 this will be facility coaches can be proud. That's very good, man. Look at this beauty. I would like to go there. This could be a nice day trip. So um, back to the comments, we have, yeah, purging workouts, alpha training, 166, using lighter weights from home and running outside mostly and maintaining size of muscle. That's good, man. That's very good. Uh, you can have a like, very hard workout doing lighter weights, man. People think like, oh, lighter weights, like you, you, you don't do anything over 10 because it's burning muscle. It's burning muscle. This means it's working on your muscle, man. Um, just doing pre-fatigue sets, uh, which means like just exhaust the muscle before you pick up the weights, so, like then like, doing push-ups, like flies, and then bench press or something. You're gonna feel sore next day. So just just have to be creative with this this kind of stuff. And um, you can definitely minimum keep your muscle. And if you are doing right, you can even build more muscle. Running is good. Running is underrated. That's what a lot of things doesn't understand. What running is global. So means it's like it's full body. It's not it's not leg day. It's your leg's gonna be ache, but it's it's also in your core, your arm. Running is just moves everything. Uh Pugin, okay. We saw this Madrid city that gets hit calls fitness and physical activity facility protected. Okay. Publish the sixth policy it believes would secure the future of physical activity sector. Okay, I'm interested in this. Let's see what's up. I want to see how is, um, what is Elena doing during the lockdown? Is she training hard enough? <laughs> uh, UK Active has published six policy calls, which it says are crucial in order to help the physical activity sector survive and recover from the financial pressure caused by the pandemic. The industry body was written in open letter to the government detailing the measure required to support the sector. The V, the reduction to 5% in line with those of further hospitality and attraction of business and backed dated to the end of the last year. Punch of support for operation from backdated rent. It would be nice extension of current business holiday per year. Yes, please. Leisure relief fund, super progress on the other as health equalities, the expansion even across the center. Yeah, we issue, we issue, yeah, I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna complain, like, it's like, I'm fortunate to be here and then have able to get the equipment, but it is like a big toll in the fitness industry, like closing for a year, if you don't expect, or you don't have reserves, then, Man, it's like a big toll in every business. And not just, you know, in gyms in general, but personal trainers, fitness instructors, yoga instructors, anyone in the fitness industry, they just force you, like you cannot work, basically. 
but it's still you still have to pay the taxes you still have to pay the rent you still have to pay everything it's it's really hard enough especially like someone who is like a small business like has like a, a little gym like a garage gym a little studio you still have to pay the rent and in a place like brighton where the rents are just mad uh i think those people should should be able to apply so like a like a you know some sort of help from the government the per five percent VAT rate was introduced for this business part of COVID-19 measure in 2020 which meant operators were be able to charge a lower rate of VAT instead of 20 percent number of service production that's cool man uh, also our rate that lower applies season tickets offered by them the lower VAT rate was initially scheduled end of 12 January extended to 20 okay um yeah in relation to the situation with rent ukf is calling on the government to provide financial support to operators for backdated rent which will be due once monetarium ends and the yeah, amm it would be great they need every support they can have because well like they like these people are who are saving energies not by staying home you need to make people healthier because they're not healthy in the first place they just we just read in the previous article that six over 60 percent of england is overweight and 30 percent is obese like and it's just getting worse during the pandemic like you need to get in a normal healthy range first which can only allow you to have like the help of the professionals so these professionals needs to be a priority when the pandemic ends once it ends it also wants to see moratorium and commercial evictions being extended okay that's good um okay that's good to see fitness pets can help reduce rates of breast cancer colon cancer obesity yeah we talked about this anxiety depression not to mention boosting our resilience cardiovascular disease exactly that's why i keep telling like this is a cardiorespiratory disease like it's in your lung if your lung is weak in the first place your heart is weak then it's gonna get just harder if you have a flu a COVID-19 or anything this nature 67 percent cancer prohibitation or rehabilitation takes place in leisure centers yep um return investment government when it comes to providing greater data support and yeah that's great man that's good to see okay let's see if you have any questions on the chat shoot me tell me about your diet tell me how do you eat what do you eat did you change anything did you lose weight during the pandemic or did you gain weight during but i did gain weight i'm not gonna lie uh it's pressure new yeah winter is always hard this time even harder obviously okay we're gonna go back to basic and um we have like 10 more minutes and we're done so shoot me questions if you have any and then we're done so next week i'm planning to come back with charlie playing with my host to stick together and then we're going to invite a couple other trainers so the boy is going to be taking over next week so stay tuned same time we're going to do saturday afternoon um we have a lot of announcement because boris is going to talk on monday i'm probably going to make a video about it and then we're going to live stream chat about it on saturday so well, there's going to be a lot of news next week and a lot of to talk about so it's going to be intense so if you have questions during the week get prepared and then you can shoot us on saturday so Charlie's going to be here. I'm going to be here. We're going to try to invite at least one more coach uh, from a different background. Um, so if you have any suggestion, you can shoot us as well and then try to invite. I have a couple people in mind. See if I can, I can bring those people in. And um, yeah, I'm really excited for the news. And Monday, hopefully Monday, we have more information about when the gene open if G open like um because the rates are very low now so yeah man i really want to invite gus but he's a bit shy man 
uh, I did invite him before, but it's like, uh, I don't know. I really want to talk about talk to him. Uh, what's what's his plan for this year? So, yeah, Gus would be great. So if you know Gus, tell him to come. <laughs> that would be great. Like Gus, me, and Charlie will be a great, great trio for for next Saturday. So talk to him on Instagram. Um, yeah, I think we're gonna have a lot to talk about next week. Um, yeah, but if you're still here, a couple people still here, so shoot me, What's uh, did you gain weight? Just put a yes or a no <laughs> in the comments. I wanna see where do you get on your fitness journey during this lockdown. It's my birthday tomorrow, so I'm gonna eat chocolate cake. So I need to save some calories for tomorrow. Let's see what's on Facebook. No, no questions there. Holiday wait, yeah. Holiday wait is uh, in February. That's not, not a good excuse, man. Holiday was two months ago. That was holiday. Um, okay. Yes, man, maintain weight. Try not to eat too much junk food. That's, that's good, man. You are doing good. Wish I could do that. I really want to drop like two, three kilos by April. Because then it's beach season and then I don't like to take off my t-shirt if I'm not, <laughs> don't have a six pack. It's just my bias. Don't be me. All right, guys. If you don't have any questions, then I think we're going to close it here. I don't want to keep you up. So don't forget, next week, Charlie's going to be here. Hopefully, we can get Gast to get here. It's been long reverse. Yeah. I know. That's true. Yeah, 2021. I thought 2021 was gonna be awesome. We're gonna be like hit it, like we have like you know December one month, like a little bit close down, and then we find like pfft, same rubbish, man. Same rubbish. Nothing changed. Uh, by Mar, like um, four weeks from here, it's gonna be in, like one year of lockdown, man. Then they said like it's gonna be three weeks. Three weeks, it's fine. Just have to stop the ride. Obviously, we didn't know much about it, but man, it's a long year. It's a very long year. Okay, but next weekend. Charlie, Gus, me, hopefully Gus. I don't know if it's come. Uh, and I'm gonna cut a couple guests. I'm gonna invite a couple people, see who I can fit in for next week. You can see the schedule on my Instagram usually. So go to my Instagram, see who's gonna come, come and join, come and join the conversation, ask us questions. I always have great people here and you never ask questions. Ask them questions, that's why they're here. So shoot them, you know, they're really happy to, uh, to answer. They're already here, that's why live stream is good can get a great knowledge from people around the world um, who would maybe you couldn't access to them. So this is the plan for next week. Uh, we're going to have a tons to talk about next weekend. So stay tuned and I'll catch you next one. Train complete. Train complete. <laughs>